Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Latte Panda Delta. So let's get started. So first I want to thank Latte Panda for sending me over the Delta for review. Now I do have the Latte Panda Alpha and I have a lot of videos that I made for this guy which I'll leave on a playlist right here. Whether they're installing Windows, Linux or Hackintosh on this guy, yeah, check it out. Now as far as the Delta, I was actually pretty excited to be checking this guy out because the price factor. Now this is a $188 board for an Intel Celeron N4100 with 4 gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC. And yeah, it doesn't sound too surprising, but for that price, it's actually not that bad for all-in-one personal computer, you could say. Now I did do an unboxing earlier during the week and due to interruptions and stuff like that, I wasn't able to finish that video. So I'm gonna put those clips here to show you the unboxing. Now, as you can see, I received this and I absolutely have not opened it yet. This is still in its original plastic wrapping. So let's do that now. I'm gonna see what we're gonna get. Now this is um, comparable to their older brother, which is the Latte Panda Alpha, but it's a little bit weaker. Oh, it's a lot weaker. And it's made to be more affordable, but within the same lineup. Now this guy has uh, the Intel Celeron N42, N4100 clocked at 1.1 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz with four gigs of LPDDR RAM and uh, 32 gigabytes of eMMC version 5. Other than that, it's basically the same. It has the same Arduino, it has the same layout and everything, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, there you go. It opens up. It's actually a really nice box. It's got their little logo stamped on there. Ta da! It's in a plastic case. This comes out. You get the owner's manual. You get a European uh, plug. You also get the US plug. Also comes with uh, Wi-Fi antennas. And what is this? Oh, okay, standoffs. So you have a little bit of standoffs in here. This way, if you don't have a case for it, you can still stand it off the ground. Uh, two stickers, Latte Panda. And their power cord. I actually really like this power cord because it got, could do a pretty high voltage um, from five, nine, 12, and what's the last one? 15 and 20. Yeah, this power brick is actually pretty good. I'm using it for the Latte Panda Alpha and I plug everything else in here as well. And that is it. The box is empty. Let's kind of take this out now. Oop. Yeah, I mean, it looks absolutely identical to the Latte Panda Alpha. Is there any changes on here? I'm just comparing the two boards. Um, let's see. In the back, there is not much of a change other than where the, I guess, EMMC storage is. They moved that around because I could see some of the stuff moved over there. And then as far as the top goes, or the bottom for you guys, um, not much of a change other than, no, it's actually almost identical on top. Before I get these mixed up, but actually you can't because the fan actually has a symbol of saying what it is, like uh, Latte Panda Delta would actually say it on there. But yeah, this board has almost like identical um, layout as the old Alpha. And from the front, you see that there are three USB 3. Now moving over to the next side, you have a 50 pin pinout for both the USB, DC input, serial, uh, I2C and I2S. Then you also have a DC plug on the right side. Now moving forward to the opposite side, uh, you have another 40 pin, but that's where the Arduino layout is for. And then on the back, uh, you have the USB-C for power and display port. Then you have the 3.5 millimeter jack, headphone jack, ethernet, and then HDMI. Yeah, that's basically it. On the bottom, you have SD card and you have two M.2 keys. One is the uh, M style and one is the E style. So they're two different, but you could actually uh, use this one for like Wi-Fi adapter and the other one for storage or a lot of people would plug in a graphic card in here. Like I was telling you about the specs earlier, this is an Intel Celeron N4100 clocked at 1.1 to 2.4 gigahertz with four gigs of DDR4 RAM, low powered LP, and uh, 32 gigabytes of eMMC 5.0. This guy also comes with uh, a built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but 
they should really check on the QC on this guy because one of the pins are actually broken on my Wi-Fi adapter and this is brand new, unopened. You saw me open this. Now, to be honest, four gigs of RAM is not that much now day and age using Windows 10. So I would recommend actually installing Linux on this. Now they do have two price factors on the website, which again, I'll leave everything on the description down below, the links and everything. The two price difference for 188 and the other one I think is 218 or something like that is one of them you get the Windows key. And I don't recommend getting that one because I would actually format this and use this as a daily driver for Linux. If you guys are new to Linux and want to learn, this this is not a bad device to learn on. Now, this is the first boot on Windows 10, and as you can see, everything runs pretty smooth. It's running Windows 10 Home, so it doesn't chew up that much RAM, but it still eats a lot of RAM. And going through browsers, websites like YouTube and stuff, it runs. Um, you're able to run at 1080. Um, I haven't tried 4K on this, but 1080 does work pretty well. Um, as far as opening and closing programs, it seems to be okay as well. Uh, it's not a bad CPU, it's Intel Celeron, it's not bad. Now I'm gonna do a benchmark comparing the two Latte Panda Delta and the uh, Latte Panda Alpha. And obviously the Latte Panda Alpha is gonna blow this one away, but here's the difference. So ultimately, I really do like this board because of the price factor of 188 and like it's a full computer that you could just whip out and use especially if you get the titan case it makes it look really good now i am going to be doing a benchmark between all the x86 boards that i have and if you guys are interested in knowing like specific benchmarks that you want me to do list it in the comments below so i know which ones to run now i did post this on twitter the other day so i do have like some people commenting on that already so i have a few benchmarks that i'm going to be running especially if somebody wanted me to test the ram between the two uh, i might i'm probably going to be doing that as well if you guys enjoyed this video please hit that like button if you guys have any questions about this hit them comments below and if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts